Welcome to Did You Know? Anna's got a couple of Did You Knows in Deuteronomy, and then uh, we've got, of course, our question, and I've got a couple of Did You Knows also. I only have two left in Deuteronomy. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 41. Deuteronomy 32, verse 41. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. I wrote down glittering sword. And I thought, glittering is that light. You know, because when you think of glitter, you know, you you think about kindergarten when you had a little bottle of glitter and you put glue down and then you pour a ton of glitter all over it. Then you take your little picture home to show your mommy and daddy and they put it on the refrigerator. But then you have glitter all over your clothes, your hands for days, and then it's all over your mama's house and she's fussing because she has to clean up glitter. Now, I was wondering, is it light or is it... What is a glittering sword? Well, I think it's light reflecting off of the sword. The sword is the word of God. And then uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. John 1 calls Jesus the true light, capital L. So I would think it would be Jesus as the true light reflecting off of his sword as the word of God. And that would make it glitter. All righty. All right, the next one. You didn't know there was a glitter. Oh, also, glittering sword. I don't know if anybody ever saw this movie or not. Back in the day, with uh, there was a movie called Excalibur, Ooh. and that was my one of my all-time favorite movies. Don't ask me why. When I was a kid, and so you know, King Arthur had his sword. Couldn't pull it out of a rock, except King Arthur. Anyway, so I don't know why, but glittering sword just stuck in my mind. Yeah. Alrighty, the next one, and this will end Deuteronomy. Yay! Yay. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. I wrote on here, Moses' eyes were, were great. I mean, how many people do you know, your parents, your grandparents, as they get older, their eyes, everybody's eyes start going bad. And he, apparently, Moses had great vision, which, you know, is great. If you're going to get old, you want at least some of the main functions of your body to be working. And um, Eric's grandmother, when she was 106, her eyesight, when did her eyesight start going? Probably about 104 or so. It was the last few years, not, not long. Not long. So, you know, for Moses, to, and he was 120. 20. Yeah. And his eyesight was still great. That's, you know, that's awesome. But then I was wondering, what is natural force and I, I'm wondering is that his strength and Eric said it's his ability to have children and I said ooh <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking you know you got today young girls are getting with 60 year old you know 20 year olds with 60 year old men I'm just sitting here thinking to myself a hundred and twenty year old man having sex that's you're having sex with your great great grandfather you're ugh ugh that's just nasty I mean, <laughs> but that's what Eric says it's his ability to have children that I'm sorry that just crossed my mind so sorry my first did you know actually both of them are gonna come from first Kings 18 in 1 Kings 18, there is the famous 
God contest between God and Baal where Elijah has the uh, altar and it says, call down fire to burn up the sacrifice on the altar. And so the people of Baal do that. And no fire comes down. And so it says in verse 27, 1 Kings 18, 27, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. And so he's mocking them that Baal has to do these things. But what's funny is that most of your modern translations change that pursuing word and make it to say that he's on the toilet. Yeah, I remember that in my, uh, before I ever started reading the King James Bible. And I thought that was the most hilarious thing. And it's stuck in my mind to this day. Ooh, what's your guy doing? Is he on the toilet? <laughs> I'll read you the New Living Bible, paraphrase, 1 Kings 18, 27. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder than that, he scoffed, to catch the attention of your God. Perhaps he is talking to someone, or is out sitting on the toilet, or maybe he is away on a trip, or is asleep and needs to be wakened. So, yeah, a lot of the modern translations say he's sitting on the toilet. I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's great because, I mean, if you think about it, you know, here we got a living God and there, you know, it's like, you keep shouting, man, where's your God at? What's he doing? See, he, he's got to go to the bathroom. What's the deal? I'm sorry, but that's funny. He shouldn't have drank all that water before you started his dog <laughs> <Yeah>. contest. <laughs> or he sure is on the toilet a long time. <laughs> Okay, we're going to answer our question from last time. Question last time, who led Israel after the kingdom was divided? Who led Israel into idolatry? And the answer is found in 1 Kings 12. 1 Kings 12, verse 26. Now Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall king me, kill me, and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put he in Dan, and this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. So, uh, the person who led Israel into idolatry after the divided kingdom is the first king of Israel, Jeroboam. Jeroboam. And you'll actually see several times when it talks about other kings of Israel, it'll say they went in the sin of Jeroboam, which meant they went into idolatry. So that was an important point. The question for next time, and the answer is going to be in 1 Kings again. The question is, whose heart was perfect before the Lord all his days? Whose heart was perfect before the Lord all his days? The answer is found in 1 Kings. Give me the name of the person and the reference that tells you that. I'll put it in a comment below. <coughs> now, uh, my last did you know... For today, 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings 18, Elijah has a conversation uh, with Ahab in verse 42, it says, Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees. Uh, if you go down to verse 40, well, I'll keep reading. Uh, verse 43, And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. 
and Ahab rode and went rode and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So this right here, did you know that the fastest marathon time in history belongs to Elijah? I don't know how fast he ran, but I do know the chariots go, what, 30 to 40 miles an hour? And uh, the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah so that he ran and got there before the chariot did. So he was running like at least 40 miles an hour at least. Um, so he is the fastest runner. Marathon record holder is Elijah. Also, oh. oh, in verse 44, I noticed this a long time ago, and I think you and I had a conversation about this. 44 says, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And I told Eric one time, I said, if you think about it, most people think the clouds are, you know, forming in the sky. But this said the cloud came out of the sea. So, you know, it just kind of, it's interesting. I think that means they've got a lot of rain in that cloud. Because, um, you know, you see airplanes trying to, the little, what do they call them, entrails or something, little white stuff coming out of the back end of their of their uh, plane, and they say they can make clouds too. They're just like God. We can make clouds, but I'm like, hmm, this one came out of the sea. I don't think you can do that one. Yeah. All right, that was Did You Know? Thanks for watching. Remember to put the answer to the question in the comments. We'll see you next time.